one of the most common emergencies that we see here at the horse hospital is colic. And unfortunately in this area, at least one of the most common causes of colic is what we call sand colic. And really that term is meant pretty loosely. It essentially describes horses that ingest actual sand. It can be DG, it can be dirt. It's basically accumulating, you know, um, sort of ground material in, inside of their intestines. And there's basically a few key things to look for in a horse that we're worried might have sand colic. The sort of classic clinical signs are, one is colic, and the colic's usually kind of, you know, it can, it can be mild or, or moderate or even sometimes severe, so it can be a pretty wide range. It often um, is intermittent and repeats itself, so the horse may go colic on Monday, and then it seems like better, or colics again on Wednesday, maybe colics again on the weekend, so they often are colicky and then feel a little better and then get colicky again. So it's an intermittent colic. Um, they often have pretty loose manure during it, so even diarrhea sometimes, because when they're passing the sand, it's, it's very irritating and kind of painful, and they, they pass a lot of water with it. The horses often lose weight when they have sand colic because it, it makes sense. Their intestines can't absorb basically all the nutrients anymore. Um, and then sometimes they'll even have like a little bit of a fever at the same time if it's just because it's very like again irritating to pass the sand. So the classic thing is somebody calls at night and says, you know, my horse is colicky and the things that make us worry that it's sand colic would be again the, um, the fact that they are colicking, have loose manure, maybe have a temperature, and then they'll often have weight loss. And that's kind of like our, our classic thing that we look for when they're colicking for sand. When we have a horse that we are suspicious of sand colic, especially like if it has those some of those kind of classic clinical signs, there's basically a few different ways to tell if the horse, um, if, if that is our diagnosis. And so one way is we listen to the abdomen with a stethoscope. And what we're doing is we're listening to the, the normal sort of gut sounds that the horse makes. And it, it sounds kind of funny, but it actually does sound a little bit like like waves sort of rolling um, at the ocean or at the beach. Um, and it's got the, just the, all that sand is sitting there in the abdomen and it's kind of rolling back and forth. And so you can hear that with the stethoscope and it, it makes us suspicious that there could be sand in there. The second way that we'll do it, and this is actually something that you can even do at home, is we take a, a few manure balls, ideally ones that haven't already touched like the, the dirt or the sand because you can pick it up you know, from, from the ground but take a few kind of fresh manure balls and put them in like a Ziploc bag with some water and fill it with um, fill it with water just to basically cover the manure balls and then break it up and then like take it somewhere and just like hang it essentially by one corner so that it makes like a, a V and the fecal balls, like all the manure and the water are settled down into one corner. And then if you leave that for about, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, the like sand, the gritty stuff will settle down into the bottom of the bag and you'll be able to feel it there. And normal should be just a few little grains of grit, um, but if it starts to fill up like half an inch or something, that's that's too much sand. And then the last way, which is probably the, the you know, the best way is to take an x-ray. And this is an example of a, x-ray that we've taken of a horse that has you know quite a bit of sand and you can see down here this is all the sand that's accumulated in their colon and actually probably some more of it you know up here as well so it's sort of two sections of sand that have accumulated this is the best way not only to tell if sand is there but also to tell how much it is because it's really hard otherwise to tell you know when you just float in the manure to tell how much is actually in the horse so this is probably the best way to do that and then the last thing that we talk about once we are suspicious of sand colic, we've made the diagnosis with um, ideally again with x-rays or maybe floating the manure is how to treat sand colic. And literally the most effective way is to stop them eating it. Um, really all of the other treatments are only a small part of it compared to, to basically stopping the ingestion of it. And really the key components are to, to basically not feed on the ground. So it's very important that the horses get fed either in a stall on rubber mats so there's no access to dirt or if they're gonna be fed outside, they can be fed in a feeder, but they have to have rubber mats underneath. And it's actually really important because a lot of horses pick up the food and then shake it, you know, and spread it out all over the ground. And the mats, if you don't sweep them off each day, they can end up with dirt and sand on them, and then they're picking them up um, from that, those same mats. So it's important, a feeder, rubber mats underneath, and swept off daily is probably the most effective way. The other thing that plays a role in it is the choice of hay. Um, hays that are like have really like like oats that have little grains or even alfalfa leaves that they really want every little bit. They tend to go through all the dirt and pick up the dirt going after those. Whereas things like grass hay, they're probably less likely to, to eat as much dirt going after every little blade of the grass hay. The second big component that people talk about is using psyllium. Um, and that's basically a, a way to try to kind of move the sand through the horse. Um, and so you can do anything from the sort of once a month protocol where you do it for seven days to 
a lot of times if we have horses that have bad sand, we'll even do single or double dose psyllium for, you know, sometimes even a couple of months to try to clear the sand. So really the two key components are don't let them eat any more sand and then use psyllium to remove the sand. Um, really bad horses with sand colic do have to be seen by a veterinarian and, and tubed with water and oil as well to, to make sure the sand keeps moving through. All right, so today essentially we learned about ways to recognize whether your horse might have sand colic. Um, the test that you know we can do as veterinarians or you can even do at home to tell if they have sand colic and then the ways to treat it. We, we really want to you know, take this opportunity to encourage people to try to identify this early in your horse. It's something that once it gets really bad, it can actually even be fatal or require surgery. Um, so what we want to encourage people to do is to, to find out early. One of the best ways is to you know, give us a call. Um, one of our veterinarians would be happy to talk with you about it and let you know if it's a good, you know, a, a likely thing that your horse might have. And then you can um, call the office and make an appointment and we can you know, help you with some of the tests to, to see if your horse has this problem.